Well, Xi's speech at the World Economic Forum uh, last week was really a reiteration and reaffirmation of several themes that he and Beijing have, uh, have advertised for the last several years, uh, dating back at least to his first appearance at Davos in 2017. Uh, really an emphasis on uh, China's role in promoting global approaches to uh, economic challenges internationally, sustainable, sustainable economic development. Uh, he also introduced or introduced or emphasized a, a, another recurring theme from other channels, that of avoiding ideological confrontation and promoting peaceful coexistence. And he linked this to another uh, emerging and recurring theme in Beijing's rhetoric, uh, that of the reform of global governance uh, aimed at trying to enhance the representation uh, of the interests uh, of the developing world in, in, uh, in global governance. Uh, that was a very interesting uh, set of comments directed at the United States, I think. Well, indirectly, at least. Uh, I think the reference to arrogance was a reference to, was actually reflected, she accusing the United States of doing what China is often accused uh, by the United States of doing, which is trying to impose its system and its ideology and its values on the, on, on the rest of the world. Uh, the reference to isolationism, obviously, was a reference to uh, it was essentially she chastising Washington for the retreat from globalization and uh, multilateralism under the Trump administration. So I think the message to Biden is really kind of uh, twofold. It's an invitation to resume uh, cooperation with, with China on global issues and to come back into, uh, into multilateralism. But it's also at the same time a warning not to do so in a way that promotes uh, a Cold War. Uh, because the Chinese believe that that, in fact, he refers to this elsewhere in the speech, specifically uh, the promotion of a Cold War, which is based on an outdated view of the balance of power and an effort to impose ideological uh, models on other countries. I think she does expect to find a more uh, willing and uh, practical, pragmatic negotiating partner in Joe Biden. But at the same time, I think he also recognizes that Biden is not going to be soft on China. Uh, I think he understands, Beijing understands that there is basically now a bipartisan consensus in the United States that China poses a profound strategic challenge that requires a firm response. And they've already seen Biden uh, and members of his foreign policy team reiterate that. I think the challenge that he recognizes going forward is how to manage that, how to walk that line uh, in an effort to find a way to reset the relationship under, under the new administration. Uh, actually, I think that the White House uh, press spokesman's reference to strategic patience has been misinterpreted uh, as indicating a new st strategic doctrine toward China. Uh, I think, and in fact, the White House uh, issued a, a clarification of that a day or so later. Uh, I don't think that was the intention at all. I think that was basically Jen Psaki referring to the fact that it's going to take some time. So the media and the public should be patient in terms of waiting for clarification on what the Biden administration's approach to China is going to be. She specifically mentioned the fact that they're going to be underdoing, undertaking a kind of a policy review. And I think it'll take some time before that shows. Uh, just to emphasize, I don't think strategic patience, which was a term used against uh, North Korea, to characterize the Obama administration's policy toward North Korea uh, is in the cards for China right now. I think we're going to see a combination of continuity and change. Uh, the continuity is going to be reflected in the fact that the Biden administration, I think, as we've already seen in some indications, uh, it's going to reaffirm uh, the nature and scope of the challenge from China. Uh, I think Tony Blinken made this point in the uh, President Biden has himself, that China does require uh, a tough response. So there's going to be some continuity, at least rhetorically, with the Biden administration. In terms of change, uh, I think the most important one uh, that Biden and his team have highlighted is that they are going to engage much more actively in consultation with U.S. allies and partners and in the region and the world on how to deal with China. Uh, and I think that's going to occur simultaneously with a policy review uh, internally, which they've kind of announced as well. Uh, and I think that will lead to, uh, I guess, the primary change when you get to the bilateral level is the beginning of a process of engaging with Beijing uh, on global and bilateral issues to get the relationship back on an even keel. 
but I think these changes are all going to be uh, somewhat incremental uh, over time uh, for two reasons. One, uh, Biden has, has domestic priorities that are going to take precedence over any bold new initiatives in foreign policy. Uh, and also because this process is just going to take some time to unfold. Uh, and he has to navigate his way through uh, how to approach a bipartisan consensus on Capitol Hill and publicly uh, before he launches anything that looks dramatically different from the Trump administration's approach.